Started with a brand new or slash used mobile 55 gallon drum uh, barrel that I bought off Chrysalis for 15 bucks. In this photo, I'm just laying out the door for the 55 gallon drum uh, barrel stove kit. Uh, you want the kit to be installed um, vertical and look straight. Just using my cordless drill to drill out the hardware um, nuts and bolts for that door on the kit itself. When cutting the actual opening out for the door, uh, if I remember correctly, I used a uh, step bit that's for drilling through a um, thin layer of steel. Uh, and I drilled that in every corner just to get that little bit of a, a curvature um, around the corners. And then use my four and a half inch DeWalt cutoff grinder um, cutoff wheel to actually cut out the rest. Now you'll see in the photo that the barrel stove also comes with two legs that keeps it off the ground a little bit and stabilizes it obviously from rolling. It also comes with a six inch um, flue for a barrel itself. It has a little bit of an arch and I don't have any other photos of drilling that out, but um, I drilled it out, cut it out. Don't remember with what, filed it down, kept it smooth and then um, laid the barrel on the floor, got it uh, level or plumb or flat or square, whatever you want to say, and marked out where I wanted the legs, drilled those out, and attached them. Oh, did this look so good, brand new, with all that blue paint on there. But as you'll see in some of the next photos and the rest of the video, it didn't stay blue for very long. Watching some other YouTube videos, of other people making a barrel stove evaporator or just a barrel stove in general, you want to burn in the barrel. Um, get it real hot, burn that paint right off the barrel itself, it, depending on what kind of paint it is or what the barrel was used before. I mean, it can have some toxic fumes. It can stink really bad. Uh, the paint can flape off and get in your sap. And I did experience a little bit of that myself. I did burn in the barrel put a fire to it, let it go for a couple hours, discolored that blue paint and thought that was probably good enough. But um, not to my knowledge, I pretty much burned the rest of the paint off during maple syrup season actually still in use. So my pre-burn wasn't good enough or grinding it off wasn't good enough. Whatever, whatever happened, the paint didn't come off completely and it just came off throughout the season. I got a chance to set up my iPhone actually on the workbench and take a picture of me actually working on this. And I had a very nice tip um, before I cut into this barrel. Um, I did go to uh, Websterant.com and buy some um, steam uh, tray pans, hotel pans, stainless steel, kind of a buffet style pan. Uh, they're called a lot of different things. A lot of them are six inches. You'll see six inches and three or four inches deep. I, I opted to go with the three or four inch deep ones, not the six. Um, maple syrup sap does not boil, you know, at four or five inches of depth. That's You have to have a tremendous hot fire, um, hotter than you even realize in order to burn or boil sap at that at those types of depths so i decided to go with shallower pans keep the sap at one or two inches and have a a, a, a better boil was kind of my thinking now i did have that tip like i was saying on a previous youtube video of someone saying the actual pans themselves are tapered they're maybe 11 inches uh, towards the top but at the bottom of the pan, they might be 10 and a half or 10 inches. I don't remember. It's been a year. So as you're cutting the opening on the barrel, you want a tight fit. So as you're cutting around the barrel, you do want to taper it in um, when you're cutting. And that was a great tip. I don't remember what video it was. Uh, and, and I'd like to give credit to that person, but I can't right now. 
um, but don't just cut a rectangle out of the drum. You, you do want to taper it in. Um, I don't know how else to explain that. This is after I obviously cut my openings for the pans themselves, as you can see. I think they're 21 inches long. Uh, I believe they're 4 inches deep. Looking back, this was another mistake I made building it. I did go to a big box store and um, get some cement board that you would normally see for um, tiling a bathroom, um, you know, above a tub or below a tub or on the floor, kind of in a wet location. Uh, I was kind of looking for something that would hold up to the heat and didn't really want all the coals to burn through the bottom of the barrel or warp it once you cut the rectangles out. I didn't think, you know, the strength to that barrel being thin as it is right from the get-go um, would hold up over time. So I did um, get some cement board, cut it, and put it in there. It did all break apart with the heat after a couple runs and eventually just kind of got scooped out there with the ashes towards the end of the season. So don't waste your time. Uh, buying cement board that was not a good idea i am going to be moving to a fire grate and fire bricks now this was more or less one of my ideas i, I can't say i stole this idea from anybody on youtube um, there probably obviously is other people that have done this it's it doesn't take rocket science to realize that um, you want to have your sap warm going into the pans or warmer if not boiling, maybe already by then. Um, obviously, you pour in cold sap into a pan, uh, you're going to lose your boil, your efficiency. It's going to take more time and more wood. So I got uh, 3 8 uh, copper, uh, more of like a HVAC refrigerate, refrigeration line copper, and bent that around the stovepipe itself, have a shutoff valve on the bottom of that, a food grade bucket there so that I can regulate the flow. So I put my maple sap in cold from a cooler into the bucket and just crack that valve, have it go around the worm, around that stovepipe. And I mean, it went in hot. And if you open the valve, it would, it would eventually cool down and not really do a whole lot. So you really had to regulate it just right. But it was a, a very good, um, kind of an option for my first year just to to heat some of the sap before it went into the pan. Well, it's finally maple syrup season. Tapped the maple tree in my front yard, got a couple lines going into a five gallon bucket. Super excited, obviously after building the barrel, you know, a month or two before the season, just dying to use it at this point. This is my first attempt actually using my preheater for the sap, putting a fire to it in the garage. Uh, as you can see, the blue paint is still discolored from, you know, the first pre-burn, as you can see. And I really thought it was just going to kind of stay like that after the burn. So uh, just a quick little video, actually, of kind of, kind of it in operation. Finally got the sap up to boil. I don't remember how long it took. Just kind of showing an example of a little bit of sap coming through that um, preheater, uh, preheat exchanger. Um, had it turned down, you know, just barely cracked the valve. So basically the, the heat just siphoned its way through there. And I do remember a few times during the season if, if I turned that thing down to basically just a dribble, um, I did have sap actually coming out of that uh, worm going into the pan already in a sap, very dark color. Um, and then it would slowly, you know, turn clear. Just depends on where I had the valve. Also, I will inform you that the back pan, that would stay boiling basically all the time as long as you had good hardwood, dry wood, and you left the door open on the stove. If I close the door, um, I could maybe keep the back pan boiling, but the front pan wouldn't do anything. Um, so a lot of times the front pan, will, as you can see here in this photo, uh, a lot of the paint has burned off and it did not have a pleasant smell to it. 
it would blow around you know it would try to get in the sap and all that stuff so i kept a wire brush on it and would try to wipe it down uh, through the first few times of using it so i'm not sure the best route if it's to have a superheated fire to pre-burn the barrel in or if it's just better to burn it in four or five times later and not have any sap um, maybe in your pans just have water in it and or just take a wire wheel and and really work that stuff off there as you can see here i have about 100 ounces of syrup 20 40 60 80 100 I'm trying to refresh my memory. It's been over a year. But I did make three gallons of syrup uh, during the course of the season. And that was out of about 120 or 140 gallons of sap. I, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look at the numbers. But it, it did average over 3% sugar content. more sap than I've ever made in the past. Uh, previous years I boiled sap um, in stainless steel uh, pots and pans out in the backyard uh, kind of over a, a fire you know with cinder blocks around you might say and, and it wasn't even a perfect design. I've seen other better designs where you know people have built kind of a a cinder block foundation and, and put steam uh, pans right on there and, and had a chimney and a nice fire and that's a pretty good option um, to go. You're just outside in the weather if it's snowing or um, you're just outside in the weather if it's snowing or if it's cold. Um, and, and most people wouldn't have a 55 gallon drum evaporator um, in their garage or indoors or anything like that but um i thought it was pretty safe um i'm pretty conscientious about that kind of thing didn't want to burn the house down but i was out of the cold i was out of the wind uh it stayed warmer obviously the sap stayed warmer when it was boiling it didn't have a constant you know rain or snow or wind blowing on it and it, and it worked out pretty well Okay, previous portion of the video was kind of a, uh, all memories from last year. Uh, this is a little bit more current. Um, this was this past Christmas. This is what the barrel did look like after a, an entire season. You can see it, it burned down pretty good. The paint kind of got a little rusty in the off season. Um, my plan was to resurrect it a little bit. I'll go buy some high temp paint, see if that would hold up. Obviously, I don't know how long it's going to hold up because the season hasn't started yet, but this is a before picture. Just another before picture, painting in my garage, put some plastic down. And here's kind of a finished product of the paint. I think it turned out really well for just a spray bomb. Um, we'll see if it holds up uh, during the season. I'll be making more videos, obviously. Okay, now I have some leftover steel that's just been kind of laying around. This is my attempt to make kind of a fire grate for the bottom of the barrel. Obviously, like the cement board I said earlier in the video, didn't hold up. Um, I wasn't going to buy a fire grate. There's nothing really perfect for a 55-gallon drum anyway. There's no sense in wasting um, money on something that's not going to work good. So I just took some used angle I had laying around cut it down and need to do a little bit of grinding, a little bit of welding. And this is gonna go in the barrel. And then I plan on putting fire bricks um, on the sides of the barrel, which it's not totally finished yet. Getting ready to weld. This is the fire grate after I welded it. Obviously I have a very cheap uh, welder. It's a flux core welder from Harbor Freight, nothing special, $100, but it's better than what I had before, which was nothing. So I'm going to end the video with this picture. Uh, this is the last picture I have of it. Uh, the fire grates on the inside, I don't have a picture of that right now. Some of the stovepipe I keep on the inside of the barrel. But then again, this is just my mobile way. I will come up with stovepipe, go out the window again. This is where I plan on doing all my boiling this year for the season, which... 
is probably within a few weeks. Uh, we're at the beginning of February right now. Um, and I will make more videos of the paint and the car and the fire gray and the bricks and how uh, season number two goes with the uh, barrel stove evaporator. I hope you guys all enjoy this video and um, have fun out there.